to your chair to get you the help you need, whatever your story may be. With Dual Complete from United Healthcare, there's more for you. Less than two weeks until Election Day, and the president's not only trailing Joe Biden in most polls, he is tens of millions of dollars behind Biden in campaign cash. And as the race gets down to the wire, questions are being raised about how the Trump campaign spent hundreds of millions of dollars in funds. Here's CNN's Ryan Nobles. From the day he took office, I, Donald John Trump, Donald Trump has been running for re-election filing his paperwork on his inauguration day, and raising money ever since. Trump and his party are on track to raise and spend more money than any political candidate in history, more than $1 billion. But despite all that cash flooding into his campaign coffers, he finds himself in a remarkable position, down in the polls and with a lot less money than his opponent, Joe Biden. I could be the king of all fundraisers. I would be the greatest that ever lived. Hello, hello, hello. Since Biden became the Democratic nominee, hello. he's been steadily eating away at Trump's significant cash on hand lead. That is the amount of money available for a campaign to spend at the end of every month. Trump went from being $200 million ahead in this category to being close than $100 million behind for the last month of the race. Now, after raising and spending hundreds of millions of dollars, Trump is claiming fundraising isn't all that important. You know, they get all this money, they'll spend money like crazy. But you know, ultimately, money doesn't get you there. Money alone does not win elections. Trump won 2016, spending far less than Hillary Clinton. But in 2020, the difference is he has raised plenty. So the question is, where did it all go? The Trump political operation has poured tens of millions of donor dollars into things like buying hundreds of copies of the book written by Trump's son, Don Jr. Facebook ads for campaign staffers like former campaign manager Brad Parscale. Ads in the Super Bowl and in the 2019 World Series, months and months before Election Day. Ads in the pricey DC media market, which is not a swing state. And that's not all. The Trump campaign spent millions on expenditures that directly benefit the Trump family including private jet travel for his campaign surrogate like his children, salaries for family members, and payments to Trump properties. Much of this spending was overseen by Parscale, who claimed to have built a massive data and ground operation that he dubbed the Death Star with his tweet over the summer, an analogy that raised some eyebrows since in the Star Wars movie Return of the Jedi, the Death Star is destroyed. The single largest expenditures, more than $300 million, went to two companies, American Made Media Consultants and Parscale Strategies, both affiliated with Parscale. The practice hit much of the campaign spending and led to a challenge by a watchdog group to the Federal Elections Commission. Parscale was demoted by Trump in July and left the campaign outright in September. But his spending, combined with lackluster fundraising, has put his replacement, Bill Stepien, facing tough decisions about where to spend dwindling resources in the final days of the race. Something Trump says is not a problem, and one he could solve in an instant. But if we need it anymore, I put it up personally, like I did in the uh, primaries last time. But so far, Trump has put in only $8,000 to his own campaign in 2020. And with time running out, he may be in a position where any amount of money won't be able to change the trajectory of the race. And Don, it is important to point out that the president's campaign account is not the only money being spent in support of his reelection. There is hundreds of millions of dollars being spent by super PACs, but that money has very specific restrictions attached to it. His campaign account is the money where he has the most flexibility. And right now, Joe Biden has a lot more of that money for the final stretch of the campaign. And it is a little bit ironic that a man who got into politics by selling himself as a businessman who is good with money, is now lacking money in order to finish out his campaign. Dom. Mm. Ryan Nobles, thank you so much for that. And thank you for watching, everyone. Our coverage continues.